General, can you walk us through what the challenges for the Airborne ISR field are, specifically with the US market and looking at everything from big data to exploitation? The challenges that we have now, as we've explained in several of the briefings, is capacity and capability. Uh, there is such a demand right now for ISR that we can't get enough to any of the warfighters, so everybody is getting less than what their, their minimum needs are. Uh, that applies whether it's in Europe, it's in, in the Asia conflict, uh, areas, uh, or out in the uh, Pacific AOR. There's just not enough for anybody to go around. And our challenge is to, to get that through with, with the companies in industry we're talking to is we need to have that, that broadband wide area type surveillance that provides not just pinpoint accuracy, but a wide uh, capability that, that helps us do the things that we need in all environments and then to bring that at a cost that's effective for, to the taxpayer for each one of the countries that's interested in acquiring the capability. And during your presentation, you almost issued your own challenge to those in attendance uh, in, in order to try and resolve these issues. Roughly, where do you think we should be heading to, to make those uh, gains? Well, right now, a lot of these surveillance systems are done through uh, what we call re remotely piloted or RPA aircraft, yet they're anything far from unmanned or unwoman. Um, we have a large organization behind each one of the, just the operators and the maintainers, but also the intelligence portion that we do in the process, exploitation, and dissemination. And we can have a crew of three that works for eight hours just watching the full motion video that are then rotated by another crew of three, followed by another crew of three. So it's literally nine to ten people in addition to the ops and maintenance that is trying to help us get that information out. So what we could use from industry is the uh, chance to go machine to machine on some of this so that we can cut through all of the, the boring stuff or the stuff that doesn't have the vital information and get it down to just the decision quality. Here's the information you need to get, get you what you need in a short time rather than real time. Based on the progress that we're seeing so far with the Air Force, um, do you anticipate that there'll be much of a leap if we're having this discussion in a year from now? And ideally, where do you think the progress should take us? Well, the fact is we're making good progress. As, as you've heard, NATO is getting into their own business with an indigenous AGS system. So they will have Global Hawks with a Block 40 capability and a fantastic radar that starts to deliver in this calendar year. So next year, we'll probably hear some of the, the discussions of what that's like to have their own within NATO. But I don't think there will be any of the commanders anywhere that says they have enough ISR. So we'll still be talking about more capacity next year and ability to get the, the right um, equipment and capability to those uh, the in need for the intelligence so that the ISR comes out as not just raw data but informed um, information that allows the decision makers to get the, uh, the data they need to, to make the decision. And just finally, this is of course your first visitation to the Airborne ISR conference. Um, any thoughts that you have on, on what you've seen or heard from today or anything else that you uh, hope to hear from the discussion in the, in the next couple of days. Well, Robert, we're early into the conference, as you know, so it, it's good to, to hear some of the industry get up and talk about the things that they're doing. I look forward to the rest of the industry application and, and tell us where they're taking it. As, as you just heard, uh, we know what the requirements are. We set those requirements, but um, a requirement today that's delivered tomorrow is going to be late to need. So it's good to hear from industry and some of the others that are forward thinking of what do I need in the future, not just necessarily a requirement for today. So that's what I look to pull out of the rest of the conference.